Next, we are going to end this game with a simple game over. So, what does a game over consist of, and how would I program this? Well, obviously, if an asteroid touches us, we should basically stop the game altogether. If we wanted to get really advanced, we could do a pop-up screen that says game over, uh, have the score, repeat something, whatever. But like I said, this is just the most basic version of this game. So, the most basic version of a game over would be when an asteroid hits us, we stop the game altogether. We know we have been hit. How would we stop the game? Well, we need to monitor for collision between our triangle player and all these circles coming onto the screen. Now, when it comes to circular collision detection with something like a polygon, let me tell you, it is not simple to code on your own. It's not even that simple to code with a library. It is more complex than using something like rectangular to rectangular collision detection, circle to circle collision detection, or even just circle to rectangle collision detection. So one method is we could overlay a rectangle on top of our triangle and then detect for a collision between that and the circles. But even that gets a little complicated when we start rotating our player because then the rectangle's rotating. And we have to take these rotations into account when using that to detect for collision between the rectangle and the asteroids. So that's kind of off the list in that case, and plus it wouldn't even be that accurate because if something touches a rectangle, that means we theoretically could touch an asteroid and have our game be listed as game over. Not what we want. So in this case, unfortunately, I am going to go the route of polygon to circular collision detection. I don't want to get you super hyped up about this because I am going to be doing this in the most easy way possible because I'm probably not the best person to describe how it all works. We are going to be using some library functions to implement this, and I feel a little bad doing it this way because I always try to explain as much as possible, but I think this is the best route for getting something up and running and maybe even showing you exactly how to start implementing library code in your game because it's going to be very handy later on as you realize that you can't code everything like this on your own, including me. Like This is very hard for me to code on my own, which is why we're going this route of using pre-made functions. So how would we begin integrating pre-made functions to detect for collision between a triangle and all the asteroids? Well, I created a GitHub just, just for this. So just as G-I-S-T, and they're basically just quick GitHub snippets available to us, and this is going to be asteroidhelpers.js. So if we look at this, this is what it consists of. We have a method called get vertices, and then we have two functions. These are the main helper functions we're going to be using. We have circle, triangle, collision, and then we have is point online segment. Both of these are going to work in tandem together, but if we plug in one of our circles and we plug in our player's triangle into this function, then whenever the two touch, we should return either true, and if they're not touching, we're going to return false. Get vertices up here is a method we're going to be putting on top of our player because we need to make sure that we can get each vertice, each individual point associated with uh, each each point on the triangle. So the X and Y associated with one point on the triangle is going to be right here, the next one is going to be right here, and the next one is going to be right here. We need all of these points for the circle triangle collision function to work because it takes a triangle, and if we don't have a triangle which consists of an array of three points, this whole thing just isn't going to work. You see that we loop through our points, and then we grab those individual points, and then we run all the code that sees is this point on a line segment, we start running everything we need to determine if the circle's colliding with one of our triangles. It's pretty complicated, you can look through this, see how things work or function. I, I guess it's not that complicated, it's all pretty well written out. But this is how we're going to do it, is we're going to use these functions to start detecting for a collision. So how would we integrate this library code into our game? Well, get vertices, as I mentioned, is going to go on top of our player class. So let me grab this method, and go over to Sublime Text and find our player class. Here it is. Right after update, I'm going to paste in get vertices. So this is going to grab a rotation, get the cosine and sine associated with it, and get the exact x and y coordinate for each point on our triangle, no matter where it's rotated. It's going to be stored within this array whenever we call get vertices. So if we want to use get vertices and start monitoring for a collision detection between our asteroids and our player, First, we need to loop over all of our asteroids. It's going to be right here within Asteroids Management, where we can actually grab one particular asteroid. So now we can go back to our gist, 
and start making use of these other two functions. So I'm going to grab both of these because this point on line segment is used right here within circle triangle collision, so we need both of these. I'm going to scroll down and copy both. Go over to Sublime Text and find a good location to paste it in. I'm just going to paste it beneath Circle Collision. And if you find that this is kind of getting unwieldy, you can always create a separate JavaScript file called Utils and pull in all of your Utils accordingly. But I think this is just the most basic way to do things, so I'm going to paste both of these in. And now we can begin using Circle Triangle Collision. So I wanted to use that within our Asteroid Management. And now I can write an if statement that calls that method. Now what is the first argument here? It's going to be a circle laid out in the exact circle object format in which we've been using for both our projectiles and also our asteroids. So the first argument is going to be that circle object, which is an asteroid, which we're selecting right here. And the second is going to be basically three points within an array that consists of a triangle, which now we can get with player dot get vertices because we added that method in. And using a library like this makes things a lot easier. That's all we need to do to detect for a collision. But you see the downside of we don't completely understand how that code within the library code works. And if you wanted to study it, you definitely can. Uh, it's totally available within other game development libraries as well, like phaser.js. You can always understand and learn their source code. But uh, something, comp something this complex might be a little out of scope of such a basic tutorial. So that's more justification of me coping with not completely understanding it. Anyways, we have circle triangle collision between our asteroid and our player get vertices, basically our player triangle. If these two touch, we should console log out game over. Now we're going to stop our game, but we just want to test that this works first. So let's save that, refresh. Open up our console, give that another refresh. Now when an asteroid touches us, only the triangle portion, we're going to log out game over. You can see that happening right there. So how do we stop our game? Well, we're going to always store an ID associated with request animation frame. Anytime this is called, it returns an ID representing what frame it is currently on. We want to grab that ID by saying, a cost of animation ID is equal to window.requestAnimationFrame. Now we can use this ID, indicating what frame we're currently on, and plug it within another method called window.clearAnimationFrame. So whenever our asteroid collides with our player, we're going to clear our animation frame, but we need to plug in that exact animation ID. What frame are we currently on? Well, we're on this one, which was assigned up above, if we get hit, we cancel everything all together. We're no longer going to call any code within animate. So let's save, refresh, and see this in action. Now when an asteroid touches us, we should stop the game all together. And it looks like I just don't know my own code, unfortunately, big dummy. It is not clear animation frame. It is cancel animation frame. I think I got that mixed up with clear interval. I want to say that's how you cancel intervals. So yeah, let's just make sure we're using cancel animation frame right here and test it again. Save and refresh. And now when we touch an asteroid, we're going to do a game over and then we're going to stop things all together. You're going to see though, we're still spawning asteroids even though our game is completely over. And this is a case in which we'd want to clear out the interval associated with where is it? Our interval code, which is spawning our asteroids. So similar to request animation frame, set interval returns an ID. So I'm going to say, whenever we call set interval, we want an interval ID that is set. And then we can use this to clear that interval so asteroids are no longer spawned. So where we have game over down here with our animation loop, we're going to call clear interval. That's what I got mixed up with cancel animation frame right here. What do we want to clear? Well, the interval of interval ID. And with that, I want to say should be good with not spawning asteroids any further. So I'll refresh with that newly saved code and get hit by an asteroid like a dummy. 
and you see that's pretty close even though they're not touching we would technically have to take some more velocity calculations into account it's pretty darn close i would say so i'm not going to go and get go too ham over it but you'll see as we start to slow down and asteroids hit us without that direct velocity movement in place then you're going to see exact one-to-one -to -one touching on the triangle to circle but we're no longer spawning asteroids let me show you exactly what i meant by that collision detection without the velocity i'll move up here yeah you see that that's only going to fire as long as this touches our side and we're not moving at a ridiculous speed you definitely need to take into account your velocity within that collision detection equation if you want it to be as precise as possible because we're always going to be moving at different rates but i think this is okay for the most basic version of asteroids so i think that's going to be it for this lesson let's do a quick run through on our game to see everything that we just created so we have really nice movement all around our projectiles are looking just fine and then of course we have game over functionality where if we hit something such as this asteroid we just stop the game all together so this is a great base version of asteroids for you to begin working further off of things i would do are split your bigger asteroids up into smaller asteroids once they are hit you can also shrink the larger asteroids make them smaller you can also create a game over screen a start screen you can definitely touch up that velocity collision detection code a little bit between the triangle and these other asteroids you can add angles for each of your asteroids as they come in so one might come in this way this way this way this way these are all just tons of different possibilities for you to continue to improve your game but i hope you learned a ton in this one i know that was already a lot to cover but that's going to give you a really really great foundation to continue building these kinds of games in the future so finally let's head back to our to-do list and check off the very last one game over so then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one